Six Italian men are gunned down in a German industrial city. Police say the killings were linked to Italian organized crime and that the men were involved with the Ndrangheta, a violent clan more powerful than the Mafia. So who are they and has the mob gone global? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Darren Jordan. Well, they're being described as bigger than the Mafia and more lethal than terrorists. These are just some of the claims about the little-known Ndrangheta, a crime mob which now outnumbers their famous Sicilian rivals. The slaying of six men gunned down outside an Italian restaurant in Germany has sparked real alarm that this powerful gang is spreading violence beyond home borders for the first time. And the Italian government is worried. No crime syndicate operating within Italy has ever been known to carry out vendettas on foreign soil before. The six men all died in a hail of bullets on Wednesday. So just who are the Ndrangheta and why are they so feared? Hugo McPherson reports. <laughs> Italy's criminal gangs were immortalised by the legends of Al Capone and The Godfather. It may seem like the movies, but Italian mafia-style killing has taken a new twist. Now a powerful new contender has emerged. The Endragheta is one of the most deeply rooted and powerful of Italy's criminal organisations. There's kidnapping, extortion, drugs and guns. The Indraghetta is said to be more successful than the Sicilian Mafia because members' family ties are even closer. If Italy is a boot, the Indraghetta clans come from the Toe, a mountainous region called Calabria, which looks onto Sicily from the Italian mainland. From here, the clans have spread their influence into large parts of mainland Europe, including Germany, and as far as Canada, Australia and Colombia. Italian organised crime has gone global. For the Indragheta, the Colombian connection is key because they're said to operate 80% of Europe's cocaine. Their annual turnover runs at around $47 billion, equivalent to Afghanistan's post-war national debt and roughly 10 times the annual GDP of Sierra Leone. With billions of dollars of revenue and a network that spans worldwide, the Indragheta operate quietly, invisibly, making it practically impossible for the police to track them down. The godfathers of old have deadly and powerful successes, brash enough to spill their turf wars across Europe. The results of their endeavours are often all there is to see. Hugo McPherson reporting there. We'll be joined now by our guests, both of them in Berlin. Kate Connolly is a journalist who's been covering this week's shootings. And Gaetano Stellacci works for Italy's ANSA news agency. Welcome to the programme, both of you. Kate Connolly, let me start with you first, if I may. I mean, you've been reporting on this story uh, there in Germany. How surprised are the German police by these shootings? And what conclusions have they drawn as to who's responsible for the killings? Well, the whole country is shocked by this. This type of thing has uh, never happened in Germany before. And uh, I think that at the moment um, they are treating it as a very normal, uh, as it were, it's not normal, but a, a, as a murder inquiry. Um, this morning, uh, Italian investigators arrived in Duisburg, the west, uh, western German town where this happened. They have been trying to fill them in on the background of this, give this a cultural context, because, of course, what it looks like is this is a, a feud between two clans from the Andrade and get a, um, a, a mafia um, and that it has spilled over into this Western German city. The German police need this context. Um, at the moment, it seems that they are very much uh, looking uh, towards the idea that this is a, a fam two, two clans that have clashed um, rather than uh, there being anything other, um, anything more sinister to it. Gaetano Stellacci, uh, many people have never heard of Undrangheta before this week's shootings. What does the word mean briefly and who is this gang? Where are they from? Okay, uh, the word Ndrangheta, please mark Ndrangheta, not Ndrangheta, means man of value. It's kind of organization born in the 60s of two centuries ago the time Italy unified in one country. And it's the most important at the moment mafia organization in the world, as the experts say in these days.
I mean, why have they risen to prominence so quietly? They've been very, very secretive. Um, and how do they remain so secretive? They remain in such a way, first of all, because they don't accept any foreigner, meaning not Calabrian people in the organization, like mafia and other uh, ma Sicilian mafia and, and uh, Apulian mafia are doing, or Camorra in, Na in Naples, are doing at the moment. So you can't pretend to be uh, 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 somebody from Calabria if you're not born there. And second uh, is the real uh, adaptation of the evolution of the world in the last, say, 40 years. People from the Indrangheta are everywhere in the internet, in the banking system, in uh, uh, developing state, all the possible area, not just controlling. They are doing, working, investing money in that area. Um, some of the figures are extraordinary. I mean, in Hugo McPherson's report there, he was saying $47 billion is the sort of money they make each year. That's twice uh, the GDP of Estonia, for example. I mean, where else do they make their money from? Okay, uh, first of all, Italy is a little bit bigger than Estonia. Second, they just work in uh, drug, weapons, and all possible illegal activities. And afterward, they invest their money in the legal system, buying uh, real estates, buying hedge funds, all what you can think, and buying as well uh, restaurants in Germany. Let's uh, bring back Kate Connolly uh, into the discussion here. I mean, how has the Italian immigrant community uh, helped um, to protect and grow this organization? What's the impact they've had on Ndrangheta? Well, um, I think we've seen in Duisburg um, and in uh, th there's a very strong um, Italian community. I think about 4,000 people. They started coming over as Gastarbeiter in the 1950s, and the Andrangheta has been able to use um, uh, th that as partly to, to grow their organisation. But we're seeing now um, interesting information coming out as to they're, they're in Duisburg, they're in the t cities of Erfurt and Leipzig. Um, there are apparently about 160 members operating in Germany. Germany. Um, apparently in Berlin alone they're running 30 um, pizzerias. So quite a, um, their tentacles are stretched quite wide in Germany. Uh, some critics are saying that the German police knew of Ndrangheta's presence there but basically ignored them. I mean will it be difficult for the police to investigate them now do you think? I think it'll be um, fairly difficult. Um, the question is as well about the two killers, the two men that were seen uh, by the one witness to the crime um, running away from the scene. Uh, the ports uh, around Germany, the ports and airports, police have been told to keep an eye out for the men, but everything is very vague as to any description of them. We're being told that they're looking for men between the ages of 15 and 85, so vague are the descriptions that they have. So it's uh, very unsure as to whether this particular crime will actually actually be solved. Um, if so, probably the uh, solution to it will lie in Calabria and not in Germany. Uh, Gaetano Stellacci, let's just go back to Italy because the Italian police are saying that this is the first ever case uh, of Italy's Calabrian mafia exporting a vendetta to another country outside its home borders. How significant is that, do you think? Um, somehow the second day after the, this massacre is uh, difficult uh, to interpret everything. But somehow something got wrong in Germany. Because until now, the foils between the Drangheta uh, families was always in Calabria. And it was something related to the difficult uh, business they are coming through. I don't know if the moment is possible to see any uh, relationship between the subprime crisis in, in the world and, and the killing in uh, Duisburg. But somehow, just the idea that they are killing six people in Germany or in, a, in a such a, a matter of, of uh, cruelty, it's just a, re a, a question of some uh, uh, discussion few years ago, for me, is not believable. It's something else. They are just regulating some accounts they were having in the past. Uh, Kate Connolly, uh, let me come back to you. As you were saying earlier, there are reports that these murdered men were part of a long-running and deadly family feud going back to Italy's Calabria region. I mean, 
What have the German police been telling you about this feud? What more do you know about it? Quite extraordinary. This apparently started 16 years ago. Um, uh, two clans, the uh, Nietzsche uh, Strangio and the Pele Romeo clans, um, in Calabria, in a town called San Luca, it's apparently known as the San Luca feud, um, that they um, there was a firework thrown and uh, then th th there were shots fired between the two clans. So this apparently has, there have been lots of tit for tat killings over the years. The police had thought that this, this uh, feud was now over um, and uh, and until um, in December, it, uh, there was a killing of the wife of one of the clan leaders, um, and uh, that was seen as a significant day, Christmas Day. Um, the fact that the uh, killing yesterday, it was Ascension Day, um, a very significant day in the Catholic calendar. Um, experts are saying that that's not um, unusual, that's not a surprise. Um, so what we've seen is this feud that started in 1991 in this tiny uh, part of Calabria, now spilling over into this German city that uh, really nobody knew until yesterday. Um, Gaetano Stellacci, uh, some say the Italian police have been very slow in dealing with the Indrangheta because they're based in Calabria, it's a poor province and a very long way from Rome. Would you agree with that? No, not at all. Sicily is farther away than uh, Calabria and the pol Italian police had some very important results in the last 10 years. The problem is the Ndrangheta is quiet. It doesn't make any uh, strong effort to get in touch with the police or to uh, be on the uh, first side of the newspaper or the TV. They just keep quiet, doing their business. OK, well, it's time for a short break now, but when we come back, we look at why the Mafia remains so powerful and what's our fascination with the mob. Stay with us.